Welcome to the stunningly pretty village of Heptonstall, a tiny settlement located high up on the banks of West Yorkshire's Calder Valley. Filled with steep, cobbled streets and medieval ruins, a walk around Heptonstall is like being transported centuries back in time. On this walk around one of England's most beautiful villages, we'll explore the hidden history of Heptonstall, the home of a ruined medieval church, the resting place of writer Sylvia Plath, and so much more. But we begin our walk at the entry to the village, accessed by way of this steep slope. The road here can be reached by car, but the more exciting way to visit Heptonstall is an intense climb up the side of the Calder Valley from the hip town of Hebden Bridge, which is located below Heptonstall. As you can see, despite the village's old-timey appearance, Heptonstall is still home to an active population of just over a thousand people, many of whom live here and commute to work in nearby big cities like Leeds and Manchester. When not out of the village, however, locals and visitors are treated to a range of wonderful sights, such as this, Longfield House, a grand home that was built in the 1730s. But at nearly 300 years old, it's actually one of the younger buildings that we'll find on our tour of Heptonstall, as the village is home to at least a thousand years of history, having grown from around this point where three roads into the village meet. The cobbled lanes of Heptonstall are undoubtedly one of the village's biggest charms with the cascading town gate here serving as the village's effective high street, home to a post office and a pair of pubs a little further along. Heptonstall's compact layout has remained almost untouched for centuries, with the village home to a beautifully serene atmosphere among the spectacular Yorkshire countryside. As we climb town gate, we're now looking towards one of Heptonstall's two historic inns, this being the Cross Inn, built back in 1617. Once upon a time, the name of the pub was the Stocks Inn, and there was an even older medieval tavern on the site before the current inn was built. Back in the medieval era, the old tavern was an important stopping point for travellers along a pack horse route that passed through Heptonstall, coming across the moors from the Lancashire town of Burnley on their way down to Hebden Bridge. Looking at this map, we can see that Heptonstall is located about 11 miles away from Burnley, while Hebden Bridge and the rest of the narrow Calder Valley lies directly below the village. Located high up on top of the banks of the Calder Valley, Heptonstall isn't always the easiest place to reach, but it's home to a wealth of history, much of which you can learn about in the small village museum on Churchyard Bottom here, a quaint lane that spurts off Town Gate. The museum is housed inside Heptonstall's old grammar school, the current iteration of which has stood here at the heart of the village since 1772. Heptonstall Museum may be small, but there's a wealth on display inside, with exhibitions on the village's medieval origins, the story of the infamous Cragvale coiners, and the action-packed Battle of Heptonstall that took place here during the English Civil War, all of which we'll talk about later on in our walk. The grammar school that once operated here was a central point in the village, existing for almost 250 years from its original founding in 1642 until 1889. But the old school is just a young whippersnapper compared to its neighbour. Here we find ourselves beside the striking ruins of St Thomas a Becket Church, located in Heptonstall's 700-year-old parish churchyard. The old church goes right back to the earliest years of Heptonstall's existence, completed in the year 1260, and which served as the centre of worship for the people of the village for centuries. Over all that time, the old church was regularly restored by the locals, but it was eventually replaced in the year 1854 by a newer parish church. However, rather than demolishing the old church, the people of Heptonstall have preserved its ruins and we can actually take a walk inside. The interior of the old St Thomas a Becket church is today a scheduled ancient monument, 
and is one of the most striking examples of a ruined medieval church in Britain, complete with clues as to the day-to-day -day lives of Heptonstall residents that came here to worship centuries ago. The church tower that we see today, for example, is a mix of different eras, with its lower two-thirds dating to the 13th century and the slightly darker coloured upper portion dating to the 15th century. That was just one way in which the church was restored and repaired by locals over the centuries, as the building was the village's most prized possession back in the medieval era. While it may be dilapidated today, the church was once a lavishly decorated chapel, with the capacity to hold 1,115 people, more than the entire population of medieval Heptonstall. Even into the last few years of its life, the church was being added to, with the empty circle on top of the tower once hosting a new village clock from the year 1810, which had been built and brought over from the nearby town of Serby Bridge. But as we now make our way outside the church, you'll have noticed that the clock has been removed, in fact transferred over to Heptonstall's new parish church, which replaced St Thomas a Becket and stands not too far away at all. The ruins of the medieval church, however, are almost certainly the ultimate jewel in the beautiful crown that is Heptonstall, encircled by quaint surroundings and even finding itself at the heart of a churchyard, the likes of which you'll struggle to find elsewhere in Britain. That's because Heptonstall is just one of a handful of places in the country that has a churchyard with two separate churches. Beside the ruined St Thomas a Becket, we have its replacement, St Thomas the Apostle, which opened in 1854. However, parts of the new parish church, which still operates today, are even older than 1854, its tower incorporating the old clock that was once fitted to its neighbour, while until 1911, this church continued to use bells that were cast all the way back in the year 1440. The recast bells of 1911 still ring out across Heptonstall to this day, but with the new parish church standing just a few yards away from its predecessor, the question has to be asked, why was a new church built? Looking back across the churchyard, it was a major storm of 1847 that eventually led to the downfall of St Thomas a Becket Church. After 600 years of serving the village, the west side of its tower collapsed in the storm, and although a few temporary repairs kept it in working order, it was decided a new church should be built, with St Thomas the Apostle completed and opened within seven years of that fateful tempest. But despite the damage caused by the storm of 1847, the two churches of Heptonstall are surrounded by a rather busy graveyard, in which around 2,100 people have been laid to rest over the centuries. You'll find graves dating back as far as the year 1600, but over all that time, the churchyard has become rather full. As a result, in 1911, a new burial ground just a few steps away was opened for the people of Heptonstall, and it's actually become a bit of a place of pilgrimage owing to one of the people that was laid to rest there. Heptonstall's new burial ground is home to the grave of the famed American author and poet Sylvia Plath, born over in Boston, Massachusetts in 1932, and who found herself in this part of the world owing to her marriage with fellow writer Ted Hughes. Hughes hailed from just down the road in the village of Mythelmroyd, and Plath had two children with him in the early 1960s. However, Plath and Hughes, who married in 1956, had a tumultuous relationship, and they separated in 1962, just a year before Plath sadly committed suicide in her home in London. Plath's grave in Heptonstall, shown in this image, is now visited by literary lovers who come to the village from all over the world. But she's not the only famous figure to have been laid to rest here in Heptonstall. As we inspect the entrance to the new burial ground, back in the old churchyard, 
you'll find the grave of one King David, the ringleader of the notorious 18th century Cragvale Coiners, a gang of counterfeiters that operated in and around the Calder Valley. Infamous outlaws of the era, the coiners made a living by shaving off small strands of the metal of real coins, and then melting down the product into new, fake coins. While they often sold their counterfeit currency in the pubs of Halifax, the largest town nearby, it was around this part of the Calder Valley that they were a major presence, using the isolated, difficult to access geography of the region as a way to consistently evade capture by the authorities. King David led the coiners over the course of the 1760s, but at the end of the decade, the gang was snitched on by one of their own, leading to David's arrest. In 1770, King David was executed by hanging near York, and most of the rest of the coiners were nabbed soon after. The gang's leader was then buried up here in Heptonstall, the kind of hidden village that was an absolute paradise for his operation back in the day. As we look over the churchyard, the tale of the Cragvale coiners has made its way into the folklore of this part of Yorkshire. But it's here on Weaver Square, Hepton Stool's quiet central plaza, that you'll find even more local heritage, in the form of a now especially rare annual performance. Each year on Good Friday, Weaver Square plays host to one of Hepton Stool's most famous events, the Pace Egg Play a once common feature of Easter festivities in Northern England. Performed across the region in towns and villages for centuries, the Pace Egg Play takes on slightly different forms in each place, with Heptonstall's annual performance telling the story of St George as he takes on villains in a battle before a busy crowd. The play has pagan roots, but generally died out in the 19th century, before a revival of the tradition came in places like Heptonstall along with a couple of towns and villages over near Manchester. The Pace Egg Play is one of Heptonstall's liveliest events, and sees the village at its busiest, a different world from the quiet streets that we're walking along today. The road we're currently walking on is Smithwell Lane, part of the historic route that takes you out of Heptonstall, over the moors, and across to Burnley. The cobbles of Smithwell Lane like the rest of Heptonstall, evoke the village's medieval past, but you might be surprised to learn that these cobbles are actually a rather recent addition to the village streets. The roads in Heptonstall were once paved with tarmac, but it was decided in the 1980s that cobbles should be reintroduced in the heart of the village to celebrate its rich heritage. But at the top of Smithwell Lane, we find a genuinely original feature. Heptonstall's Old Village Pump, which was placed here in 1891. It's the last remaining of what were once four pumps in Heptonstall, providing fresh valley water to the people of the village. Until the last half century or so, when Heptonstall has become a quiet retreat for people who commute to work in big cities, the people of Heptonstall used to be almost entirely engaged in one industry, weaving. The rows of houses on this lane were once the homes of the village's many weavers, engaging in the industry that dominated this part of England from the early medieval era. While larger weaving mills were established down the hill in Hebden Bridge, the people of Heptonstall engaged in a rather more small-scale industry, weaving their cloth by hand inside their homes. Today, some of the homes are even adorned with small blue markers that tell of the weavers who once lived inside decades ago, working on their cloth all day long. Weaving provided a crucial income for the people of villages like Heptonstall, and as such, it was essential that people were able to keep working through the day as long as possible, in order to produce as much as they could. That's why you'll see that some of the older houses in the village feature especially large windows designed to allow as much light in through the day 
to help people keep working. From around the 15th century, people would come from far and wide to buy cloth in Hepton stall, which was sold at the old cloth hall down in the centre of the village. The cloth hall was the centre of business in Hepton stall for a healthy period of time, although it eventually lost traction after the immense peace hall was established for selling cloth in nearby Halifax in 1779. Back in the centre of the village, we're passing by the White Lion, the second of Heptonstall's village pubs, and which was established here around 700 years ago in the 14th century. Once upon a time a regular meeting place for the infamous Cragvale coiners, the White Lion also served travellers on the old route from Burnley to Hebden Bridge, but that wasn't the road we're walking along today. Towngate here was only built in the 15th century as a newer road through the village with the pubs originally facing the other way, to the old pack horse route, just a few yards away. But outside the humble history of this village hidden high up on the banks of the Calder Valley, Heptonstall was also the site of a dramatic battle during the English Civil War. In November 1643, much of Northern England was a stronghold of the Royalist armies, but Heptonstall was the opposite, a pocket of parliamentarian sentiment. The village was controlled by a parliamentarian garrison of about 800 men, surrounded by a sea of royalist sympathising locales. To quash this pocket of resistance to King Charles I, a royalist army set out from Halifax and reached Hebden Bridge at the bottom of this valley. Both sides had armies of roughly the same size, but the parliamentarians had the high ground up here in Heptonstall, watching from above as the royalists advanced slowly up the hill. As the king's armies approached this village, the parliamentarians began to rain down upon them with gunfire, and even rolled boulders down the steep road where we began our walk, knocking many royalist soldiers down into the river at the bottom of the valley. A number drowned in the river, while others were captured after the parliamentarians chased them and then locked them inside a church in nearby Luddenden. But moving away from the story of the Battle of Heptonstall, here we find another church in Heptonstall, and you might be surprised to know that this one is a world record holder. This is Heptonstall Methodist Chapel, which is the oldest Methodist chapel in continuous use in the entire world. Built with a distinctive octagonal shape, the chapel dates back to 1764, and its construction was overseen by the leader of the Methodist movement, John Wesley. As can be seen on a humble plaque on the side of the chapel, Wesley himself preached here in Heptonstall many times, the last time being 1786. Still open today? The chapel's 258 years of history make it yet another stunning landmark in this hidden gem of a village. But if you're looking to visit Heptonstall, there are a number of different ways to get to the village. As we spoke about earlier, roads do link this village at the top of the valley with Hebden Bridge below, and Heptonstall is also served by a small bus that stops around the village streets. However, as we also mentioned, you can get up here on foot, but it's not for the faint-hearted. As you can see from this hidden churchyard, the streets of Heptonstall are as higgledy-piggledy as they come, with this part of the village below the street known as Northgate, composed of a network of muddy lanes that run between allotments. Walking around here requires a bit of extra attention, but not as much as that arduous climb to get into the village. In the centre of Hebden Bridge, you'll find a hidden alleyway known as The Buttress, shown in this image. As we look over the resplendent top of the Calder Valley, The Buttress is a challenging 0.2 mile long cobbled lane that ascends 209 feet, or 64 meters, up the side of the valley. The Buttress is spectacularly steep at times, with a gradient approaching 30% at its steepest points. However, the reward for completing the climb up the buttress is to arrive here in Heptonstall, a place where you can relax in a land that time forgot. Well, a land that time almost forgot. 
Hepton Stall is of course famed for its beautiful cobbled streets and elegant old buildings. But we mustn't forget that this is a living village, not a Disneyfied tourist attraction. Here on the edge of the village centre, we find a busy car park, composed with many of the cars that belong to locals, and which are understandably necessary for the people that live here. As we saw back on Town Gate, shopping in Hepton Stall is pretty much limited to the post office, so a trip to the supermarket almost always requires a drive down the valley, unless you want to carry your shopping back up the buttress. There is always the bus down to Hebden Bridge too, but for trips further afield, a car is very much needed, and to make sure that locals' cars remain in working order, Hepton Stall has a compact village garage here near to Town Gate. Of course, cars and buses aren't necessarily the only ways you can get about. Our equine friend here reminds us of the ways that people once travelled through the village of Hepton Stall in its infancy, with the old pack horse route from Burnley passing just a few yards away from here. But the horse of Hepton Stall isn't the only reminder of the village's rustic past, as we find just next door. Inside these railings are the old village stocks of Hepton Stall, which were used to punish local criminals and ne'er-do-wells. I don't think King David and the Cragvale coiners ever ended up in the stocks, but a fair few drunkards certainly did over time, particularly as the stocks once stood outside one of the village pubs. Originally, the stocks stood just outside the Cross Inn, which we saw earlier, and which was originally known as the Stocks Inn. The stocks stood there outside the pub until the Victorian era, before moving near to the Methodist Church, and then to their current home at the heart of the village. And that now brings us back out to the centre of Hepton Stall, by Longfield House, and where Hepton Drive meets Town Gate and Hepton Stall Road. Despite being without doubt one of the prettiest villages in Yorkshire, Hepton Stall is still somewhat of a hidden gem, likely owing to its relative inaccessibility. While the village can be busy with tourists at times, it's most often as serene as it's been as we've walked its streets on this wonderfully sunny afternoon. And so, that brings us to the end of our walk in Hepton Stall. A captivating hidden gem featuring picture postcard views, eye-catching medieval ruins, the resting places of a couple of famous figures, and even the story of a civil war battle. There's so much to discover in this tiny village. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you're looking forward to visiting Hepton Stall for yourself sometime soon.